It sounds like you want to farm some of these crystals, yes? Yeah. Uh, yes, we see no way that could go wrong. I believe, I believe first we're going to take a short rest. And as you just sit there resting, you know, maybe chatting quietly amongst yourself, it's very quiet, you know, there's no activity in the rest of the cave there. Every now and then you hear like a little gurgle of some kind of liquid from one of the little slots there, but that's about it. I'm uh, sketching the giant language down as best I can. You want to inspect this room again? How close will Raj approach? Uh, just just close enough so I can see it. You could probably get right here. Got a light with me. You can see that this kind of rotund, man-shaped rock has actually been shoved to the side here. Hmm. There is a big crack on the ground, but like where it once was. There's no sign of any hand there. It looks like there is just a little... A, not a little. It's like a sizable crack in the floor. But you can can you can see the runic writing and write it, copy it down. All right, I'll walk away. Roger saw no hand. He did see a big crack where started said that a hand had been. And the rocks been pushed over. It's good. Cool. It's fine. It's good. Good. Fine. Good. It's good. Oh, fine. It's yeah. good. It's fine. It will be fine. So the hour wraps up, and from what I remember of your plan, a couple of you were going to be in the tiny hut down here. I, well, uh, I'll ritually cast the dome so you guys say when have at her all right uh i'll bust a crystal off take one crystal so you have a crystal immediately one of those oozes appears um i'm gonna just take shots at my bow oh just blast twice arthur is up he's gonna do the same thing he likes your style do it with my bow Okay, it gets to move. It's heading toward the strongest source of crystals it senses. Raj? Can I see it from there? It's starting to ooze over the edge. I, I will shoot at it, and then I will wave, I guess. Did you say you will wave? Yeah. <laughs> I still have a bonus action, and nothing to do. Okay. So I'm going to wave at it. But this is the second round. The second one appears, plops out of the other one, and Starlight, you're up again. Yeah, the first one you, you whittled down, it's like, it's shrinking down to like a little, now it's like a little ooze. You've like blasted apart a lot of its mass and it's just smaller and smaller. That hits. Well, which one are you hitting? The little one? The little one, yeah. Yeah, that hits. And easy. Nat 20. Oh, nice. <laughs> Shield. Crit. Crit on her D4. It's just a tiny little thing now. Uh, Griff. D4. Hex. Out of the closest blood slime. And then he'll cast Eldritch Blast twice. Arthur will blast. What's up to the little one? Poof, it's gone. Avia? I'm going to shoot the one that's left. Roger, back up. Okay, I'll we'll take a little shot. And I'll wave at this one. So he will just Eldritch Blast. Arthur's gonna take his shots at it. He blasts it away. Boom. So your test run shows that you can pretty easily destroy two at a time with range. So I won't make you do that for seven more times. Uh, seven more times. Oh, yeah. You have one more crystal in your hand, Raj. Everyone's giving you like the thumbs up sign from above. It worked. Well, then keep going. Okay. So you're going to take a second crystal. Yeah. Um, you do it. And you clear out, you know, the oozes that appear. Boom, boom. They, they don't get very close. They eventually, you know, they're only getting like this far before you manage to destroy them. So you destroy another round. So now you have two crystals. You take a third crystal. And once again, you know, the oozes come out. Except Griff and Starly, to the south of you, you feel like a little tremor. Just the tiniest, you know, little um, shaking of like maybe the floor in the room behind you. It only lasts for a couple of seconds, and then you go on to defeat the blood oozes. Oh, they fine then. Probably <laughs> super no problem. <laughs> Look, nothing bad has happened to us so far. I, I don't see any reason why that would change. Okay. Then uh, grab another one. So you grab it, the oozes pop out, and once again, Charlie Griff. You feel this trembling in the in the floor behind you. It's gonna quickly roll the two sets. I think this is just what uh, like caves do, guys. I don't think we have to worry. Yeah, yeah. I should keep going. Yeah. So you're going for a fifth stone. Uh, no one's saying no. 
No so, yeah. No. Okay. I'm keeping an eye on the uh, tremor. You can actually see now the ground is shaking, and it's like, it's it's getting pretty intense. I will call out to Raj and tell everyone that I think the thing that came up before is being disturbed. Yeah, are, are we done? No, uh, we can be. I, I don't think it's breaking the surface yet. We kind of wanted to say hi. Anyway, do we want to try saying hi now? Or do we want to just keep grabbing crystals? I say we keep grabbing crystals until it breaks the surface, or we don't have any other choice. What if it breaks the surface and sees me taking crystals, and it makes it really mad? Yeah, well, if no one wants to say hi now, I'll start reaching for another crystal. You're reaching for... I'm the... giving people a chance to say no. You're taking a sixth crystal. Sounds like it. Once again, some ooze is sploosh out. Starly, behind you, the floor starts shaking, and you see that same giant hand start to push up. And within just a few seconds, there is a huge, misshapen, giant creature in that room. It, it has, it's so big. It's in a matter of seconds, it emerges from the ground, like all the bricks and just fly in the air till they hit the wall all, all around it. And it's gigantic. It's filling up the entire room. And it's staring at you with one huge yellow eye, one tiny shriveled little like white eye. It doesn't look very happy. Is everything still okay? Uh, it, it's here. Does it want to say hi? It's roaring. Uh, Starly, <laughs> roll an intelligence check. It's hard to gather all its words you know it's, it's it's an ancient form of like giant that you're not like familiar with but you're gathering the sense that you know wake up wake up everyone everyone right yeah uh-huh cool guys cool. is it possible that right. our greed and hoopers that might have let us stay possibly that you know, i never would have thought it but it seems impossible but <laughs> <laughs> okay um starly what do you want to do uh, I'm going to use giant, and I'm going to uh, cast suggestion. Okay. And tell it, I'm going to suggest to it that it wants to let us get these crystals that we are supposed to be here doing that. And you're looking at it and speaking these words in giant, and if anything, it just start it scowls more at you, and like saliva starts to like drip from its mouth and its tongue onto the floor, and you can see it holding a a gigantic club, which it like starts to raise in your direction. I'm back off on this side, closer to being able to uh, leave, and I'm gonna shoot this ooze over here because it's blocking my way. Raj, you you heard you heard a huge deep voice shouting from that tunnel that you can't see where Starly and Griff are standing. Can I get up here? You can probably get to the next wall, but not going to have enough motion to get up that one. No. I'll, I'll go here. Uh, Elvis got the flying. Arthur is going to take shots at that one right there. Am I still hidden, or do you want me to roll another stealth? I'll let the app carry it over. But behind you, the floor started to shake. Cool. Okay. So... I am going to shoot, uh, and I am going to use um, my whales of the grave, mm -hmm. and oh. I'm going to hit the other one with 2d6. The little one is, it's a little splotch, but still there. Or do you want to move? Yes. Okay. Yes, I do. <laughs> it is now the giant's turn. Starly Griff. You see this, it, it's, it's, its head starts to make it out of that tunnel. And it turns its head to like look at both of you. And it's just snarling. So what nickname are we giving this guy? Nope. No? Okay. One of its eyes fixes on Griff. Griff must make a charisma saving throw. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Only time you'll see a green text 19. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it. You take 10 psychic damage as whatever it's did. This, you feel its hate sear through your brain. Beginning of the next round, Arthur sees another creature appears. It's not as big as the first one. It's actually, Arthur will tell you, you know, if you all survive, that it looked like, you know, that stone card figure animated and came to life. Can, can you remind me what these pillars out here look like? 
look like natural stone pillars holding up the ceiling. That didn't appear to have, like, heads or legs or arms or anything. You didn't discern them, no. Okay. Starling, you're back up. Easy's gonna try to hit the smaller one. It, poof, blows apart in, like, a spray of blood. Okay, I'm just gonna move up here, and he is going to cast his amplified blood curse of banding on this uh, slime, which means it won't be able to move and it can't use the actions. Bonus action, get a uh, scooter in a grip's pocket. A little skull flies in the grip's pocket. And then uh, try to get up. Make our acrobatics. Oh, it takes in all your movement to get up to the top, but you make it. Arthur is going to... Um, you hear him shout, there's one more behind me in the room. He's going to take shots at the blood ooze. So I am going to... Do I want to shoot the bow first or do I want to run first? I'll shoot the bow first. And because I am a lovely little small creature and I took the mobile feet, I'm going to run right through it and yeah. buy it. Okay, you're all the way off to the, to the next room. Okay. Yeah. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs> it is the giant's turn. It's fully out. You see it there. It's still hunched over because even now the ceiling isn't high enough to accommodate its its height. And now, Raj, <laughs> you see it for the first time. This big, slobbering, misshapen lump of a giant. Mm -hmm. It is behind Starly. That is its turn. And then up here, you hear stomping. You see a smaller one appear. And you hear... You hear it shout at the big one there. And Starly, roll another intelligence check. Now it sounds like it's saying, where's the last? That's all you can sense. The blood ooze is heading toward the closest source of a crystal. It gets up to Griff and it's going to swing a pseudopod at him. I'm going to hold my action and I'm going to hold a thunder wave. This thing has reach, I'm going to assume. It is very long arms, yes. And I am going to wait for Griff to move far enough out of the range that he would not be affected. Uh, I'm going to try to get up to here. I will uh, shoot a sacred flame at the ooze. Uh, is Griff aware of uh, Roger's skull uh, in his pocket? Oh, I, like I wasn't trying to be subtle or anything. Or maybe yeah, the skull flew in front of Griff's face, then drifted down to one of his pockets. Sure. Okay. Uh, um, is it the same pocket that the crystals are in? It was. It was. It would have been the first pocket it could find. On an even, yes. On an odd, no. It's the same pocket. Okay, so Griff's gonna reach into his pocket and transfer the crystals to his upper pocket. Oh, you don't trust. You don't trust the skull. I, I don't trust the skull. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't trust that skin was bastard. Right. Okay. Uh, with that done, he's going to move. The giant has a 15 foot range. And as you <sighs> leave its range, it's going to take a swing at you. Um, yes, it <laughs> slams uh, into you. Hellish rebuke. Okay. And then the blood ooze will take a swing at you as you leave its range. You take 23 damage. Okay, luckily he is still up. Oh no, okay. he's not. He was down to 18. You are right here. That You do not leave its range. And it gains back 18 points from when it hit you. Yeah, the ooze and the giant need to make a DC 14 con save. So it takes 17 thunder damage and moves back 10 feet. Pops down back there. And the giant is going to... It fails. Push back 10 feet. Arthur is going to... Try to finish off that blood ooze. I think I'm going to then delay, because I can't really help Griff. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if anything happens, I want to be able to, like, run in. The giant... Uh, uh, gonna take a swing at Starly. Oh, it misses. You duck under its first blow of its club. But then it swings back and takes another blow. And it misses again. <laughs> She just like dodges back and forth. She's like, ha 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 ha. And it, it roars in anger. Um, the second one up here, um, started, you, you, you kind of hear a distinct chuckle as its fellow misses. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one we can make friends with. <laughs> Except he holds up a finger and like this frigid blue line streaks out toward Arthur. And you see like icy you know, streaks over his body and some of it like goes on and covers his legs. Charlie, 
you see a, a third one, much smaller than the others, but still like misshaping and kind of like just gross, stumble out of the the, the bottom room. It's a wee baby one. Mm-hmm. That's the one we adopt. Uh, bonus action, Nikizi is going to, dang, try to attack that blood ooze. Poof, it's dead. Charlie is going to take her chances. She runs over, touches Griff, dumps a cure wounds. It, it smacks your back as you as you move away. Now that Griff's up, first I'm going to bonus action move all the dancing lights right in front of his face. Ah. I don't know if that does anything, but I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I'm going to poke my head out and use Vicious Mockery. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to run away. Griff does something about cutting out Griff's last and these things are going to help much, so he's just going to run. Arthur is just going to book it. Unfortunately, you all see his legs are like coated with ice, and he now only has 20 feet of motion. I am going to book it. It starts to squeeze through. Hello. Yeah, you see this huge head just looming in that doorway there sneering and just kind of the jaws snapping at you but you do hear shouting you hear it shouting like you, you you're blocking the door you moron i am going to move my movement it's gonna swing at you as you're leaving its range that's fine it has disadvantage you feel the blow like coming over your head but you duck just in time and i am going to hold my action until rod is out of the way and i'm going to when rod is out of the way i'm casting entangle on that square so that it gets him in it i will try to tumble away it, it, you, it took its reaction it did yeah so I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just running away okay hello okay as soon as it's gone oh it's it's all entangled in that corridor so it is restrained how does it appear when Charlie does that? Is it vines or thorns or what is it? Roses, like the vines of with, with like rose blooms on it. Yeah, they just wrap around its legs and arms and it's like howling in, in fury. And I will shout, now's a good time to leave. I, I'm going to shout back in undercom and we can still talk about this. Oof. I want you to do except one, so one, two. And that'll be his action. The icy particles around Arthur's legs fell off. And he can move his... He's going to just follow in all your examples and just booking it. Avia, you're going to make it out the cave, I assume? I am. I'm going to first shoot it with an arrow, though. Just because. And then I move my icon out the door. You start heading out the door, and you can see the path heading down to the shore again. You see Skapos and his Sahaguan uh, companions just lounging by the boats. I'll uh, smile at them and be like, Time to go. No big deal, bounce. right? Yeah, this time it bursts out of the rose bushes holding it. It's out of the doorway, but that's its turn. And behind it now, so you can see the other one just kind of moving in, but it just can't get past its big friend. And you can barely see a third one at the rear, you get, being blocked off by the big ones one in front of it. I'm going to drop it, and I'm going to put another one here. No, I, I will confidently walk out of the cave it's like maybe a 60 foot path down to the shore okay boat, 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 boat. riff following behind him uh yes avier you're heading down let's say you can make it to the shore on your turn here what are you going to tell scopos time to go all done we uh we managed to get oh, you oh did you crystal. succeed he said Yay. oh wonderful can i see can we see we want to see him before we go back home if you look at griff maybe he will wave it for you i think that in rogers have a sack <laughs> no, you saw, no, no, you you have the oh, one. Oh, wait, the, sorry. The, the, the very specific one. So Griff doesn't say that. Uh, instead, he'll just take out one of the crystals and hold us up. They all start writing to look at Griff and like shouting the happiness, cheering. Not at the boats, running toward Griff. Oh, boats. Boats are good. Let's go in the boats. You're pointing at the boat. <laughs> at the boat. Boat, boat, boat. boat. Uh, yeah, they say, okay, yes, uh, yes, we have to show the high priestess. Yes. They start running yeah. again to the boats. Raj, you're, you're reaching the shore at this point. Hop into a boat. Yep. Uh, Griff, same thing. Hop into a boat. Mm-hmm. Arthur, like just leaping into a boat as well. Avia, same thing. Oh, yeah. And so we will say that all of you, because this one is just big and slow and it's being slowed down so much by the corridor and Charlie's Entangle spell, that you all make it to the shoreline and you like urge the Sahaguin to push off really quickly. 
And just as the boat starts to pull away like 5, 10, 15 feet into the lake, looking back into like the entrance of the cave, you can see the creatures emerging and just shouting in anger at you and shaking their fist. But the, the Stugans don't see any of that, right? Uh, they hear them and they look back and start shouting in alarm. Is that not supposed to happen? Scapos looks at you like, what is that? What did you do? We took a crystal. We, we did what she told us to do. That's, we've never seen those before. What do you we, mean? That's not we, supposed to happen? No, we hear it's it's the the brave ones who make it back say it's usually like the, the blood monsters. We've never seen oh, those before, though. We saw those, too. How many crystals we, did we you take? We thought those were like his pets, huh? How many crystals did you take? What? Just one. Yeah, we were only told to take the one. Roll deception. Both of you. <laughs> Oh, I'd love to suck. Oh! kind of like squints his eyes at the both of you, but he didn't say anything. He says, uh, uh, we, sh- we should head back to the village. We will inform the, the high priestess. Okay. As the boats start to pull away farther and farther from the shore, and, you know, the, the, the creatures you see behind you just moving up to the shore and still shouting in anger at you. I'll wave. Start, you hear him shouting, thieves, thieves. At the Chulo. Losers. You start heading back. After a little while more, you start to see the village the lights of the village in the distance. And in a few more minutes, you arrive there. Oh, this is a great day. Yes, we the, the villagers are, have been told that you have a stone. Mm-hmm. We must go immediately and inform the, the high priestess. Once again, you know, the honor guard appear from under the water. And then the high priestess herself appears, followed by her captain. And Skapos is explaining in Sahagu to her. Then he turns to you and says, uh, please present present what you have. Uh, uh, Griff, the crystal. Uh, Griff will present one of the crystals. There's a big cheer. Hey. Scapos holds out his hand to, like, give it to her. Griff. Uh, yes, he will hand it he over. Will, oh, he will hand over his preciouses? Yes, but just one. The captain takes it out of your hand and and then he gives it to uh, the, the high priestess. And then she starts speaking and Scapos is translating. He's saying this is like a great honor from Sharvos. Our warriors have once again defeated the treacheries of the great Kiev and returned with a gift from the gods. This is a great day. Let us celebrate tonight. There's a big cheer. Uh, uh, what, what sort of happenings go on at these celebrations? Scopus said, oh, it's just a celebration. We have a great feast. Perhaps some of the slaves will fight to the death for us. We will see what the high priestess thinks is most appropriate. Cool, cool. You see, he whispers, uh, if you had brought some more stones, that would have been an uh, even greater boon. But she is very pleased with what you have done. Well, we are honored to have helped. They, and she kind of nods in your direction and then disappears back into the water. The festivities will begin in a little while. Some of it is underwater, so you might want to partake of, of our uh, breathing herbs. And you can join us in maybe the Great Temple to witness the ceremony. Sounds great. I'll lead you to the temple. Okay. And Scapos and a few of the other Sahaguin like grab you by the hands and start pulling you through like it's a maze of buildings underwater almost. Like you're it's very confusing sometimes. After just another few minutes of swimming through this maze of corridors, they pull you up into an underground room. There's just a giant shark yes, you mat there. See what appears to be a giant, you know, the bones of what must have been a gigantic shark. It's like thirty feet across. And there are just... Nothing to worry about. It's already dead. A bunch of Sahagun all over the place. You see the high priestess Zykus. You see the the big captain there. Underwater sound travels differently. So you can like feel, you actually feel the song as much as hear it in your ears. And Scott is say, yes, this is, a, this is a great day. We can add another stone to the jaw. Ooh. The high priestess sees you and nods in your direction again, and she has the stone. Scapos says you can approach. You may look at the you may look at the jaw. This is an arm you have earned today. Uh, maybe maybe, maybe Griff shouldn't <laughs> look at this. Maybe not. <laughs> maybe like Griff and Raj exchange significant looks. Yeah. And you hang back. Yes. Yeah. But Avia, where is she doing? Uh, she'll move a little bit forward and be like, oh, nice. Yeah, I see it. You can see that Zykus has the stone that you gave her in her hand. And looking at the jaw, you can see it's mostly empty of teeth. There's still like maybe a handful of like the original shark teeth in it. You know, gigantic, six inches across, you know, very jagged and sharp looking shark teeth. But most are missing. But it looks like maybe a third of the missing spots had been filled in with those stones. And Zykus has the one in her hands. And she leans over like up here. And it seems like she's 
fitting it in with some wires to add it to like the teeth up here. Gapa was like, "This is this is wonderful. We will someday we will have this entire jaw filled up with stones." Arthur is going to go to Scapas and ask,、uh, "Would it be too forward to ask for maybe a relic of、uh, a tooth just to honor the god?" He's saying he's catching on to, to their language. Scapas says, "Oh, that's very that's very wise of you. I will ask the high priestess. I will speak to her afterwards." As Zykus seems that she's fitted the stone in, she stands back and it's in place with the rest, and they all seem to start to glow a little bit brighter. Scapas says, "Yes, wonderful.、Uh, we should take our leave now." The rest is the rest is not for、um, not to be offensive, but for heathen eyes. Nope, no offense taken. <laughs>、uh, he will lead you out through the base of the temple and back to the shore. Is there anything else you want to do on the beach there? Well, I guess it's if we want to partake in the celebrations, or if we want to go back to the little hut and be like, "Oh, this is this is time."、Um, that doesn't necessarily any reason not to partake in the celebrations. It's not like we can head back to the mine until they're willing to take us. Yeah, almost a terrifying thought with their love of taking slaves. It is. <laughs> This was why we didn't start a slave up twice. So you maybe go and join them on the beach with their meal.、Uh, yeah. Okay, it is mostly raw fish. It has like a, a an acidic aftertaste to it, like an acidity. You're just thinking it might be because it's from this weird underground lake. While you are there on the beach, though, eating, Gapos comes back. You see him heading toward you, and he's telling us like, "I was I was telling、uh, the captain about the creatures that we saw. What happened? Why? When did they appear? They appeared after we took the crystal. They were just really angry and big and scary. They did not like us. They appeared after the first crystal. So the the only crystal you took, yes.、Mm-hmm. Their attitude seems a t- the tiniest bit hostile. So I'm going to then kind of interject, and I'll say, you know what? Maybe that actually happened after we killed the the red things, and then we went towards the statues with the crystal and tried to read them. So maybe that was why it happened. Have you guys ever tried that? No, no, we've never had a chance to try something like that. Hmm.、Mm. Interesting. Yeah, I'll say. You know, the ground did shake when that、yeah. happened. Mm. Interesting information. We we will have to explore that area more. Maybe we can take our own crystals to see what happens further.、Uh, I mean, be careful. They're、yes. they're not they're not happy people. No, they are not. <laughs> <laughs> like I would I would be careful as you do it. Like just just saying. But、uh, but still, if they if they impede our progress to the stone, we must we must remove them. That cannot be. We will have to. Sounds like be more careful when we enter the cave now. It、yeah. seems that you may have released. Additional creatures, unfortunately. Sorry about、uh, that. Well, hopefully they'll go. Yes, back I'm sure、level. it was only because you took one stone. I, I am positive of that. He knows. He says. It's it's probably the approaching of the stone to the the the, the, the approaching of the crystal to the stone. Of course, such a thing. Well, such a thing could happen when you take only one stone. I'm quite sure.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. Significantly, Starly is going to ask if any of the other villagers. Uh, the swagen were able to understand what the creatures were saying as they were leaving. Just sound like gibberish to us.、Uh, I'm assuming that enough crystal has been removed from this place that they are on their guard because so much has been taken over time.、Mm. I see. And they、uh, are tired of you guys taking crystals. Oh God! Can I just note the unmitigated pull of us waking up these guys and going, "Maybe it was your fault." We have taken many crystals. It is true. Yes, they are rightfully ours. This is our territory. Sure, of course, of course. He he wishes you a pleasant time in our festivities. Thank you, thank you again. Of course. You hear you see him speaking back and forth pretty animatedly. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well, that seems fine. Just want me to try and head back to the mine as soon as they'll let Allow us. us. Yeah, like I almost. I almost feel like admitting that we have more would be worse at this point. So we're just we're just gonna hang out, I guess. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, I guess so. Do we want to come out at the mine, or do we want to see if there's another way out of here? Do we want to ask like a Mykonid or、uh, someone else if they know another way out? Do do we like want to buy one of them? They could guide us out, and then we could like let them free. Do we see any like? Did we see any mykonids that were kind of like off to the side on their own? They're all back in their pen. Oh.、Uh... I mean, do you want to try, Avia? You and me, go、we'll、speak with them. 
Yeah. You just casually are walking around uh, there. Then you just suddenly veer off and you head over. Yes. You veer over like this ridge here <laughs> and you're out after just like a minute or two, you're outside of the village. As you know, a couple of Sahagun are just, you see one just like walking away. You dash over and maybe like hide on the side of the house here. And you are within 20 feet of the Myconids. They, they all look over at you. And after a few minutes, you start feeling like there's spores in the air. And they start to suffuse your skin. And you sense that... You, you can begin sensing some of their thoughts. We were wondering if any of you happen to know a way out of here that isn't through those long tunnels. One of them explains that there are different tunnels heading to the above world. There's one by their village to the north. Is it possible that you would be able to show me how to get there? Um, yes, we will. We, there's, they speak as a plural. Like we would, we would take anyone who wishes to visit our, our village, but we cannot leave here. We are slaves. Do you know what the Swagin would ask for you, for your freedom? On occasion, one has come with one of those those magical stones and when that happens they trade us back and forth looking over your shoulder you see there's a Hagun watching is watching as you like all oh, or like you're just kind of like dashing back to the forest but it doesn't, it doesn't say anything it's just but it's clearly it clearly saw you and you eventually do find scapos there with a bunch of them and there he's um eating as well Ugh. you know i feel like I can't tell where we are in the cycle anymore without the light. I've just gotten so used to using it. Would you be able to tell me? It is mid-afternoon, he says. It's not yet time to sleep. He says, yes, uh, there is a above ground. There is a, a there is a ball of fire that tells you what time it is. There is. It's high, high, high in the sky in that big blue expanse It seems very us. strange. It's, I, I look up and I know that the I can touch the sky if I were large enough. But for you it sounds like you can never do that. The sky is beyond your reach. It is. It's almost a little it's almost a little unnerving. Maybe, maybe the dwarves for all their faults are, are wise to live under the ground like we do. Oh maybe maybe that's their purpose for doing so. Cause if you ever fall up, you just just keep going. Does does that happen? Sometimes. He keeps eating his fish. Who's gonna broach your topic of conversation? Did we come over to talk about Slaves, yeah. Okay. Uh, we, you know, we were we were talking about um, some of your, your your mushroom slaves. Do you ever sell them to people? On occasion, great warriors have returned with two power stones, and the, the high priestess has granted them slaves for their for their sacrifices to the tribe. I look at Griff. <laughs> mm. Griff will look back at Walt. See. I am sensing that you need the services of slaves. Maybe. What task do you have in mind? Exploration. Well, I, we can send one of our own scouts with you. There's no need to enlist a slave. Their work is more valuable here in the village. Uh, uh, what, are you, what are you doing? I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> well, but in past times, some warriors have returned with more than one stone. And the high priestess did grant them slaves for their services. But of course, you only came back with one, so such would not be an option for you, I'm afraid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's my whistle to be able to... How do you want the slaves again? Directions. We, we, we don't have a way out without Sohugan's help. If the again will take us outside, that's not a problem, right? Not really. So how, li how, how late is this party going? Probably till most of the sleep cycle. Goodness, you guys like to party. There are very few occasions to truly celebrate in this world. Mm -hmm. There are there are raids. There are creatures that will attack us from places unexpected. There are frog folk of an evil disposition over there. It said they are digging to find their ancient god. They're digging even deeper. They apparently they have found an ancient ruin and it, it has called to them. The only the only piece we have is perhaps from the the mushroom people. They don't expand. They don't attack. They just keep to themselves, which is probably why they make good slaves. Yeah, they seem cool. That, that's 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 kind of why we were we were leading towards using one of them. I guess personal preference counts for much among you people. Yeah. Maybe if this is not sufficient, we can ask for an additional task of you. How would that suit your needs? We're actually interested to find out more about what the frog folk are up to. Oh, 
that's interesting. Mm-hmm. You can bring back any news of their activities. I'm sure that uh, the High Priestess will be interested in granting you uh, no boons for your services. I mean, you've already granted her a great service this time, and your boon has been to spend time amongst us in peace. But beyond that, you know, uh, a task like this may go a great way toward earning more of her favor. I think we, we could do this for the Priestess. She will be very glad to hear that. Might want to take a nap at some point, but... No, you're going right now. He actually goes back within like 10 minutes. Like, yes, yes, we're ready to leave. Oh, okay. This is the High Priestess and Keith. This is a matter of like grave urgency. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so this is fine. Totally cool. I see no way this could go on. Scopolis returns from like uh, underwater and is like starts shouting at Lexa Hagoon and they're gathering up a couple of boats. But Starly. As you're standing there watching the activity, you hear in your mind a very firm, strong, feminine voice. This is Aunt Jen. Are you all still alive? Yeah, got a little sidetracked by fish people. And we are down below doing menial tasks. Is, is that the first time anyone at once heard her speak? Like, we've heard her laugh maniacally. Some of you have heard her laugh, <laughs> giggle, maniacally. But now, like, Starly has heard her speaking. Uh, meanwhile, you know, all the Sahagun have their boats ready. They're waiting for you to join. So basically, that takes all night, and you end up here. And you see, like, a little camp of Sahagun. And they seem pretty excited that, you know, there's people joining them. But then Scopolis immediately, like, tells everyone, set off. And it's going to take the rest of the day as you're going to, like, march through just... It's weird underground area. You can't see very far. It's dark. You hear weird noises all the time in the distance. Sometimes it sounds like just screaming. Other times there's like animals hooting like way in the air above you. That's fine. At one point, Scopos like hears almost his inhuman screaming. And he motions for everyone to run off the trail in the opposite direction. And he points you to all hide behind a banana find a bunch of rocks. Okay. The screaming gets very loud for a couple of seconds, and it almost sounds like then it dies down, and you hear what sounds like a tremendous, like, nose sniffing around, and that lingers for 30 seconds, 40 seconds, a full minute, but then it starts to move away, it sounds like. But you wait for, like, a good five minutes before, like, Scopolis gives the all-clear sign. And he sighs. What was that? That is something we don't want to, uh, encounter. It's just, uh, it's a creature of mouths and eyes and tentacles. It's we're not sure where they come from. And you know, it doesn't seem to be very many of them. Hopefully this one hopefully we can move through this one's territory quickly. Come come. Okay. You do finally approach it looks like a riverside and you see maybe twenty of the like Sahagun structures poking up from like the water and on the shore. And Scopus has explained to them back and forth. And he says, yes, uh, it's, we must go speak to the priestess, Crescress. This is uh, the high priestess's daughter. She, she protects our people here. And you see a Sahagun female, which looks kind of like, like the high priestess. Not as big, but you can kind of make out some of the features are the same. And she speaks common. Scopus, who are these? Who are these people? Are they slaves? Scopus is like, no, no, the, your mother sent them to, to assist you in your need. They have performed, they, they, they found a crystal for your mother and gave it to her. And they've agreed to help you to find out more about what the deep tells are doing. Hello. Wonderful news. Yes, we are hard pressed. It's getting harder to, to hold back their, their giant toads. And something, something is driving them to madness, it seems. She points out on like the sand there and she starts like drawing. This is the deep cold lake. It's, it's even deeper than the Great Lake by my mother's village. It's an extend. We don't know how far it extends down. Uh, some people say it doesn't actually touch a world anymore when it goes so deep. And on the north, we were aware of, you know, frog folk villages, but we've seen none of them. And there are humans with them. Why would your kind be down here? I don't even know why we're here. Uh, what, wait, what type of frog person are you? You're not from here. Are you a friend to these folk? Uh, I've, I've never met them. No, I come I come from up, up. It's almost like kind of clicks his tongue at her. Well, yes, my mother says that you, my mother has sent you, so... I, I will trust you then. So this is a task you can do for us. See what the frog folk are up to. See what they have discovered. Mm-hmm. That that will be a good thing. Anything you find, though, is tribute to the clan, of course. Yes? Of course. Kappas looked at you. I do not look at him. He's just staring at you. He yep. looks at all. Yep. 
No, I can feel his eyes on me. I do not look at him. Mm -hmm. As she points you off to like another little hut to sleep in over the night, that's where we will fade off for the evening. You're heading off. You're you're still underworld with the Sahagoin and are about to go um, see what these deep toads are up to. And I'm sure it will be perfectly fine. Yep. Mm -hmm. Totally cool. Everything's been fine so far. 